welcome to Q3 CY23 post result conference call of CIE Automotive India hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Basudev Banerjee from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thanks, Sagar. Uh, first of all, thanks to uh, CI Automotive India Limited Management for giving us the opportunity to host the call. Uh, we have with us the top management uh, represented by Mr. Handel Alvarez, CEO, Mr. K. Jayapraka, CFO, Mr. Vikas Sina, Senior VP Strategy, Mr. Orovitz Lafont, Business Controller, and uh, Swapnil Saudagar, DDM Strategy. Uh, without wasting any time, I'd like to hand over to uh, Vikas. Over to you. Thanks, Basudev. I welcome all of you on this call, as also Ander, our CEO. I will present the Q3 C23 results of CI Automotive India Limited, uh, which was formerly known as Mahindra CI Automotive Limited. At the outset, we would like to bring to your attention that the sale of 100% stake held by CIE Forging Germany GmbH, uh, which we call CFG, in its wholly owned subsidiaries is complete. It is to be noted that while the transaction has been completed this month, the transfer of business to the seller takes effect from 1st July 2023. As a consequence, we have restated the results of the European operations for Q3 and 9 months for last year. So the Q3 C22 and 9 months C22 results for Europe have been restated in this uh, presentation. We now start with the results of the India operations for Q1 C23 on page 7. Sales was INR 14393 million, EBITDA INR 2405 million, EBIT INR 1862 billion, and EBT INR 1746 uh, uh, million. Uh, thus, sales grew 1% year on year, EBITDA 12%, EBIT 15% and EBT 13%. EBITDA margin in Q3 C23 was at 16.7% compared to 15% in Q3 C22 and 16.8% in Q2 C23. The year-on-year -year sales growth of 1% was more or less in line with weighted average market growth across the market segments we operated. There are some mitigating factors to consider here. The impact of declining steel prices was significant in this quarter. Also, please note that Diwali was in October last year, while it is in mid-November this year. The festive effect was felt more in Q3 last year, while it will have greater impact in Q4 this year. Then, there has been some delay in the ramp-up of some of our orders, and this has impacted sales growth, but that should be corrected in the coming quarters. Nevertheless, we are happy to note that EBT, profit before tax, grew by a healthy 13% in spite of the anemic, quarter, uh, anemic growth this quarter in India. Our efforts to maintain our margin trends are bearing fruit. Overall, we have positive expectations on growth and margins from all our verticals in India. The market situation in India continues to be optimistic with all the four market segments showing good sequential growth especially heartening is the sequential growth in the two-wheeler segment and the festive season is expected to give a good boost to this segment. Tractors continue to be steady on a high base with rural income showing recovery, though the erratic monsoon this year could somewhat dampen the prospects a bit. Now we move to the results of our European operations for Q3 C23 on page 8. Sales grew to INR 7262 million from INR 6806 million in Q3 C22, which represents a 7% growth year on year and is slightly better than the market growth. The impact of forex and steel price drop mostly cancel each other out in this quarter. 
the drop in sales sequentially between Q3 C23 and Q2 C23 was 15%, which is in line with observed seasonality as August has almost a three week holiday period. The Q3 C23 EBITDA in Europe was INR 1249 million, EBIT INR 1009 million, and EBT INR 813 million. EBITDA grew 36% year on year. EBIT 42% and EBT 19%. The slower growth in EBT compared to EBIT is due to the higher interest costs in Europe this year, which is because of higher interest rates. As you know, interest rates have gone up in Europe. EBITDA margin in Q3 C23 was 17.2% compared to 13.5% in Q3 C22 and 19.2% in Q2 C23. As explained in our last call, the inflated margin in Q2 C23 and the slightly depressed margin this quarter is due to the stock buildup in the month of July and is observed every year. Metal cash flow is also seeing the continuing impact of a cyclical slowdown in its end use market. The market situation in the coming quarters is a bit uncertain with the continuing war in Ukraine and the tense situation in Israel, which is which are casting a shadow. The EV penetration in the European auto sales keeps increasing. Therefore, our attempt will be to be in step with the market while maintaining our margins. And now, if we go to page nine, we will see the consolidated results for Q3 C23. Sales was INR 21655 million, EBITDA INR 3654 million, EBIT 2871 million, and EBT 2559 million. The consolidated EBITDA margin for the quarter was 16.9% versus the 14.5% in Q3 C22, uh, uh, while sales grew by 3%, EBITDA grew by 19, EBIT 23%, and EBT 15% respectively. The YTD September 9 months results for the India operations are on page 11. Sales was INR 41375 million, EBITDA 698 million, EBIT 5303 million, and EBT 5045 million, and PAT INR 3685 million. Sales grew 6% com compared to the corresponding period in C22, higher than the YTD weighted average market growth. While sales grew 6%, PAT grew by 15% year on year, and this was achieved by expanding our EBITDA margins in India to 16.7% compared to 15% last year. The YTD nine month uh, results for Europe are on page 12. Sales was INR 25486 million, a 14% increase over the corresponding period last year. EBITDA was INR 4592 million, EBIT INR 3776 million, EBT INR 3262 million, and PAT INR 5877 million. Margins have recovered to levels seen before the energy crisis as power costs have stabilized. Please note PAT includes 3356 million of profit from discontinued operations, that is CFG. This profit includes a one-time impact of approximately INR 1100 million of settled insurance claims and others. PAT also includes INR 2090 million of foreign currency translation reserve, which is non-cash, credited to PNL on sale of German business. Normalized EBITDA overproduction value is at about 17%. Uh, the recurring path is INR 2521 million, while YTD sales grew 14%. Recurring path in Europe, which is taking out all one time value, grew by 26%. The consolidated YTD nine month results are on page 13. Sales was INR 66861 million, that is roughly 6,700 crores a 9% increase over last year. EBITDA was INR 11520 million, 1152 crores. EBIT INR 9079 million, EBT INR 8306 million, and PAT INR 9562 million, that is 956 crores. 
As explained in the previous section, PAT includes 3356 million of profits from the discontinued operations. Excluding that, consolidated PAT for nine months, YTD September 23 was INR 6. 206 million that is 620 crores on and we are on track to have the highest PAT in our history in C23. It is to be noted that while YTD consolidated sales grew by 9%, the recurring PAT grew by 20%. Recurring PAT which is without any one-time uh, you know uh, non-recurring uh, uh, profits from the discontinued operations. So therefore, to conclude, in spite of hiccups on the top line, we are on course to deliver an impressive improvement in earnings per share without any one-time factors. So thank you very much. We can proceed to Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Jinesh Gandhi from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, quickly, uh, if you can share what was the impact of uh, the price decline or the commodity cost uh, decline uh, in the India business? Steel prices. Steel prices. Steel prices. Steel prices. Uh, it has been an impact of almost around 3% of, of increase. Of the increase, sorry, of the increase. Decrease. Decrease, decrease, decrease. Okay. And uh, for the uh, uh, European business, uh, we have seen a change. The euro uh, revenues in, uh, in euro terms have declined by about five percent. Uh, is that correct? And we uh, is that largely because of steel price uh, past through impact? Then you are saying Europe uh, uh, revenues have. European business uh, euro revenues, uh, constant currency basis, uh, seems to have declined by about 5%. Uh, uh, so, but there's also a steel impact there. So the forex impact and the steel impact are actually cancelling out in Europe in this quarter. So uh, what you okay. see is uh, the rest of it. Got it. Got so it. It's not actually declining. Got it. And uh, uh, the outlook for Europe business, given that uh, so not wants to add this, yeah. no, they, in fact, as the exchange rate impact and the raw material impact are cancelling each other, the reality is that our business in Europe grew more or less at the level of the market. Okay, so our our growth of seven percent is in line with the market. But slightly below because uh, we have the impact of Metal Castello that has uh, because explained in the, in the script. Right. Uh, Metal Castello is suffering a little more because we are selling a big percentage to the U.S. and the U.S. market is, is going down because of the higher interest rate there. Okay, so the off highway uh, market is negatively affected by this uh, impact. But we think that this uh, the recovery will come during 2024. Okay, so there is a certain decline, and Metal Castello will recover it uh, during 2024. That's our expectation. Got it. Got it. And uh, can you update us on the uh, EV uh, order wins and the Euro European business? What's the salience of that now for us, uh, EV and the European business order book? So, uh, you know, as Jinesh, as we have explained, you know, we are looking at, uh, you know, four major orders, you know, two in Metal Castello, which are expected to start ramping up in, you know, some small bits have already started, but they will start ramp ramping up next year. In Metal Castello that we have talked about 28 to 30 million, these are two orders. Uh, and then we have uh, orders both uh, at, at CIE forgings, steel plates, uh, aluminum forgings, uh, and they, they, you know, like right now they are small, 
but uh, uh, you know what is happening in europe is that you know ev sales per model is very low at this point of time so even though the penetration looks high the sales per model is small so the ramp up is a little uh, is a little slow but we all, we expect all these four uh, orders or four or five orders to uh, start ramping up in uh, you know from 20 to 2024 onwards and we will see good results there also as a summary uh, this is mr ranath speaking so just as a summary of the new project allocation the new orders that we are getting in in europe for example you can see that the 74% of our uh, new orders this year everything that we got 74% of what we got this year are for electric vehicles so you can see that the the move and the launches in europe are concentrated in evs so this is a uh, good news for us because we are in line with what in the market is is doing in metal castello we all the businesses that we are getting uh, from all this ba basket 50 percent is also for electric vehicles so in this year so that means that uh, we are also well aligned with the with the future and in india that the you know that the electrification is coming but it's slower and at the, at the lower pace than at a lower speed than in in the rest of the regi regions approximately 10 percent of our new orders are for evs okay so let's say that uh, the our new order portfolio is is perfectly aligned with the market evolution so i think we can be comfortable with this transition to happen and of course the the uh, the key uh, thing for us will be how to manage this transition as uh, for example in this moment most of our programs ev programs that we are waiting for to start are being delayed by the customers because of different reasons i mean some lack of batteries or, or, or certain market uh, difficulties that our customers had, but uh, they will come for sure. So during next month, we will see these new projects starting and ramping up. Okay, so overall, we can say that the evolution of the new orders is, is pretty exciting, and also that we will uh, see the new projects starting and ramping up soon as our customers promised us got it that's good to know and lastly can you talk about the next day at the end of the quarter uh, where we are and that uh, uh, and i'm presuming this would be uh, after uh, the sale proceeds of uh, the german operations they come again but uh, uh, what jinesh uh, uh, we couldn't get mm -hmm. that uh, you know like what is the net debt? net debt at the end of the quarter at some sort level yeah. Net debt, JP. Uh, it's about one point. Yeah. Can I answer? Hello. Yes, JP. Go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah. It's one point one billion INR. Uh, okay, and uh, this is after considering the cash at uh, German operations, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so this won't further go down. The, the, yes. the cash of the German operations will be received during the month of October. Yes. Okay, so in September, the sale was not yet executed. It was executed in October, so this is without including the German operation. Yes. So the debt will be reduced by the amount that we will get from the German operation sale. Okay, okay, got it. So this will probably, I mean, uh, become net cash uh, post this yeah. uh, uh, receipt. That's and, any Okay, sorry. A last question from my side. Any thoughts on repaying debt at the European operational level given the sharp increase in interest costs, uh, considering we have cash in which is part of the pairing? So, Dinesh, um, um, we are looking at uh, our costs of borrowing and the um, uh, income we get uh, in the cash pooling. So, we are uh, we have some arbitrage there. So, to the extent we have a positive arbitrage, we will continue until we have some real need in the business for the cash uh, instead of netting it off okay got it uh, great thanks and all the best i'll come back in queue yeah thanks Yunus. thanks Yunus. thank you the next question is from the line of 
Nitin Arora from Access Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, just on the Europe production side, uh, though when we look at your nine months production versus your sales, you're pretty much in line with what market production is. Uh, but just wanted to uh, take a heads up from you. When we look at Q on Q, production have really declined very significantly in Europe. Uh, can you throw some light? Is is something uh, uh, transitory in nature, or you think this pressure will continue on the production? Uh, if you can throw some light on that, and then I'll take up the second question. So, so you are talking about Europe sales in this quarter, uh, uh, six to uh, million yeah. IRR versus the previous quarter, right? Uh, so basically, when you give the market update in your presentation, you talk about production, right, which is down 17, 18 percent. Uh, uh, July to September versus April to June. Okay. Uh, I mean, you've given in your presentation in Europe results. Uh, so, I was just trying to understand that is that uh, because Q1, Q optically we go down because of the summer season, but this time the fall is quite drastic. When we look at your nine month production data of Europe versus your sales, it's pretty much in line, 14% growth. Uh, but we are trying to look that it is something uh, you're looking more this production run rate to continue or there is some improvement is coming in, in Europe as far as production is concerned for your clients. Q on Q, uh, that drop of 17 or 15 percent, you know, we have uh, the market has dropped 17, we have dropped 15. Yeah. This is very much a factor of seasonality. In, okay. in August, almost three weeks are off. Yes. Correct. So, you know, so three weeks out of 12 weeks is off. So, you know, like in a quarter. So you see that kind of drop in, in, in the sales. That's all. And, okay. and in Q4 also, please bear in mind, in December, one week is off. So obviously in Europe, H1 is always better than H2. In India, it's the reverse because we have the festive season in the second half. So this is very much in line with seasonality. You know, the market is what it is. You know, there is no panic in the market. There's no demand drop in the market. This is pure seasonality. I mean, every year there is uh, seasonality, but we don't see that much drop. It's fine. I'll, I'll take it offline. That's fine. Uh, second is uh, when we look at your uh, on the on just on the India business, uh, especially uh, uh, on two wheelers, because uh, one of your large clients is is still ramping up on exports, uh, which uh, uh, we are not seeing that much ramp up happening, but. Generally, on the two-wheeler side, you're seeing uh, production ramp-up happening. Uh, that is one uh, from your, let's say, large clients and, and few other clients. And second, uh, in terms of margin uh, improvement uh, from here, uh, we are seeing that few of the OEMs are clawing back margin. They're not giving easy margins out to the uh, ancillaries and, and uh, down the chain. Uh, can you throw some light uh, on that as well, as far as margins are concerned? Just those two, those two questions. So on the two-wheeler side, you're right. You know, the exports is has not recovered as much as we had thought. On a YTD basis, exports, two-wheeler exports are down about 20% on a YTD basis overall. And you are right, you know, our, you know, one of our strategic anchor customers, Bajaj, is very dependent on exports. And, of course, we suffer accordingly. But... The point is the domestic market is certainly looking up. If you look at the retail sales data from the dealers association, Prada, you will see, you know, there is some good news there. Yes, it is slow growth, but it is coming back. So on two wheelers, we do think that the festive season will give a little bit boost to the two wheeler market, uh, two wheeler uh, numbers in India. To your second question on margins from OER, that's a constant, you know, dialogue that we have with our OEMs. You know, uh, yes, the OEMs are always interested in optimizing their margins. We are obviously interested in optimizing our margins. We are partners, and this dialogue continues. So my question was that, uh, is it something 16, 17 percent is somewhat uh, we will try to maintain, or do you see further from synergies? Um, though you have articulated earlier also that maximum synergies have been taken in. Uh, but do you see further scope from here uh, of improvement? Okay, that is a very good question. In fact, what we think is that we still have uh, room to improve our internal efficiencies. That is our uh, main fight uh, in in our operations. We have all the all the verticals 
doing a great job to continue improving and, and we think that we will be able to to continue this journey and uh, the room for improvement is, is there and we have already identified the, the gaps. So uh, my answer is clearly yes. Also, uh, this market uh, growth or that we expect and, and business growth that we expect <coughs> for, the, for the next quarters will also support us on this on this margin improvement. We have a lot of projects in the pipeline that are delayed, as I explained before, and once these projects are ramping up, we will see certain improvements also. So overall, I would say that the the, uh, the margin improvement is a never-ending story, you know, I mean, we, we need to continue improving. Always, we said that the, the gap compared to our European or Mexican operations is, is still high in India. We think that we can do uh, the, our production even better. So that's what we're, we are doing, trying to be really competitive in, in, in India and get the appropriate margins for the company. So uh, my, my answer is very clear to you, is yes, we need to improve the, the margins. We think that we can do it. Great. Thank you so much, team. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the team of uh, Nitesh Regi from Chris Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have a few questions. Uh, the first question being, uh, you've mentioned new project ramp up in the PPT. Uh, could you please elaborate on those? Are these large projects and uh, which segments are we targeting for this? Now, to answer your question, you know, I'll, of course, Andrew will add to whatever I say. And, you know, you have to understand in India, we have been making growth capex of about 200-250 crores, you know, like 2000-2500 million for the last two, two to three years. So a substantial growth capex, you know, close to, I would say, if you take from the year 21 to now and even one more year ahead, if you look at it, you know, we would be in the range of, you know, as a good, as I said, an average of 200 to 250 crores every year. So, and all of this is against committed orders. So some of these orders have not uh, ramped up to our satisfaction, and, but they will ramp up. Uh, because we know that there is growth in the market. When these ramp up, you will see better growth results also, not just margin results, but better growth results in India. That was the point we were making. In terms of what are those, you know, we have mentioned, you know, for example, we have expanded our, uh, we have a new plant at CI Rosu. Uh, you know, we have had, you know, expansion in the aluminium EV four-wheeler uh, you know, uh, space at, you know, our uh, aluminium uh, aluminium plant. We have made investments in Mahindra TV's new models, which are in, in, in the course of ramp up. New tractor models are coming in from Mahindra. So, you know, there is a whole lot. As I said, in India, we have been investing across the board in almost every vertical. Every vertical, we expect growth. Some of this has been delayed. And therefore, we are seeing you know, growth will come. It's, you know, we have been caught up in this quarter uh, at a bad time. But other than that, we do expect all of this to ramp up. And there is one to add. Oh, you, you answer perfectly. Because... Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next question being, uh, is there any update on the sunroof strategy for India business? Sun gold. Gold. Sunroof. <coughs> No, there is no news at this moment on on this. I, the the sunroof business in in India is doing well, is growing, and we will analyze internally and and come back to the yeah. to the board and of course then to the to the market. So right now we have not taken a decision. We have noted this. I think you know even in the past uh, yes. this has been asked. We have noted this. We'll come back to you with an answer. Uh, you know, give us uh, give us some time on this. Okay. Okay, uh, and uh, just uh, one more question, the last one. So, as for my calculations, we will be ending with around 500 crores of cash uh, this year. So, uh, any thoughts on M&A? Any? An M&A is 
an integral part of our day-to-day -day operation. So it is not something that, you know, we keep looking for stuff. So we are looking for stuff. At this stage, we are not at, you know, you know, we are not in a, 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 any advanced stage that we can talk about. But yes, we are looking for opportunities in India. We are not looking for opportunities outside India. We are looking for opportunities in the areas, you know, where, you know, adding customers, adding new ways of doing, doing business, you know, so different segments that like aluminum, four-wheelers, we are looking at, uh, uh, you know, a new customer base, etc. So we keep looking for it. But, you know, one thing I must say that we will not do an M&A just because we have cash. We will do M&A if we think it is appropriate for us. That is something, you know, like, please uh, bear that in mind. Yeah. Hello. Uh, Mr. Jalan, are you done with your question? Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, thanks uh, uh, Jalanji. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Kali from Invesco. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks. Uh, my first question was on Metal Castillo. Can you just help us understand what was the decline in metal cash flow revenues for Q3 and also for the nine month period? Okay. In metal cash flow, we have a decline because of the, the market evolution in in US of approximately 15%, from 15 to 20% in this Q3 and Q4. Okay, that's what we expect the for the next quarter too. Then uh, what we are told is that we do in next uh, calendar year there will be a recovery okay so the situation is that now we have this 15 to 20 percent drop and then we will see perhaps in q2 q3 next year we will see the, the revamp again on this business however also we have the new programs for the uh, electric vehicles in in US that we we are now launching and preparing everything so the ramp up will start so we will be able to compensate this drop uh, anyway with this electric vehicle business and kind of just the uh, number that you mentioned 28 to 30 million kind of order wins for metal customers that will take a couple of years to kind of ramp up to peak revenues Is that correct? yes it, it will take it, it will go ramping up gradually during next year okay so uh, it will depend also on the uh, introduction of these vehicles in the in the american market so the the expectation is that we will see uh, let's say a smooth growth during next years got it and just secondly i think ihs is kind of expecting uh, production to be broadly flat uh, for europe uh, car market next year uh, but then, uh, uh, given your commentary on the orders kind of ramping up, I to assume that uh, you would kind of outperform the end market uh, production growth. Okay, that's our interest and uh, our intention. But it's true that the the IHS is is saying that the the European market will be flat in the next four or five years at around 17 million cars. Uh, that's why. Together with the electrification, we will see a, a very challenging <coughs> scenario in Europe. Uh, however, with the let's say new project allocation that we have had in the in the electric vehicle field, I think we will be able to to let's say overcome this situation and and of course gain market share. Uh, that's our our interest. Yes. Got it. Thanks. I'll get back to you. Yeah. Thanks, Nikhil. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vimal Jamnadas Gohil from Alchemy Capital Management Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yes, so thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my question is on, uh, on, on on the India business. You commented that uh, you spent almost 500 to 750 crores on growth capex uh, with committed businesses from customers. Uh, now, just, just trying to uh, think aloud uh, as to why will the customer not go ahead despite the market's uh, uh, seeing some uh, seeing good signs of growth. I mean, if you look at uh, the new models, they are flying off the shelf right now. So, uh, uh, where where exactly is the challenge? Uh, uh, I mean, the orders potentially should have should have come. I, and why should there be a delay 
in the first place. Yeah, thanks. No, they depend on specific projects, uh, Vimal. So that's it, it, no, you are right. The markets are not doing badly, especially for four wheelers. Two wheelers is not doing well. You know, some of the models that I talked about are EVs. So we talked about the aluminium four wheeler EV, uh, you know, EV production. Uh, so, so there are so there are specific areas. Of course, uh, in general, uh, the markets, especially for light vehicles, doing well. No doubt about that. So, uh, so some of these, uh, some of this is for exports. So there is, uh, in specific areas, there has been, uh, uh, you know, uh, the ramp up has not been as fast as we thought, but it will happen. So you are right. There is. I'm not saying there is a market uh, problem, and uh, you know, and that is why, uh, and you know, and that is why uh, this thing is happening. No, it is just a, a delay. It will come. No, no issues. So, so what you're saying is uh, these are newer models which are taking time to ramp up. Uh, maybe the customer is looking, focusing on the existing models. Is, it, is that understanding correct or? No, no. It is not that. It is you know. It is. Uh, you know, look at the EV models, for example. You know, like for example, for example, in this year uh, on four-wheeler EVs, there has been some slowdown in some model areas. So I'm not saying customer is doing this or that. This is general evolution uh, of of new models. Sometimes it gets delayed. Our project gets delayed by two, three months, four months, six months. That's normal. Right, right, and and and, and uh, 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 the 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 signs of revival are we already seeing it, or uh, is 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 that uh, a few uh, a few months away still? Revival of what? Uh, these these projects ramping up. Yeah, 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 it will ramp up. Yes, we are looking at it uh, in the next uh, next few months. Yes. Right. So as we speak, we are seeing signs of these orders uh, coming back. Uh, or ramping no, up. No, these orders have not gone away. It is just that those uh, introductions are, are just taking more time. That's all. Understood, Vikas. Uh, 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 and sir, uh, Metal Castello, uh, are, are, um, uh, we have a very large exposure to uh, off-highway vehicles. Uh, is that understanding correct? And which is why we are experiencing deep cyclicality. Yes, that's, that's right. Right. So the revival should be should be uh, should be sharp, right? Uh, because if the slowdown has been so uh, has been bad, so the revival should be should be equally sharp. Is that is that has it played out similarly in history, and uh, can that be expected in the future as well? Yes, we we expect that uh, yes we will see the the revamping of this business uh, in the next months. Okay, probably not uh, immediately, not in the Q4, not in the Q1, but uh, mid next year we will see this this recovery for sure and as i told you before uh, we will have additionally all the entrants of the electric programs that we had got for for us for another customer so with these two effects we will see that uh, our sales in meta castello will come back to uh, to the normality and and we will see uh, growth again okay but yes uh, we need to as we are now in the bottom side of the cycle we need to uh, suffer this drop in the next two one two three quarters that's that's our expectation but we we are optimistic and and we have everything prepared to 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 go up and to ramp up again uh, soon uh, just one follow up there uh, the 28 to 30 million order is 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 are with passenger vehicles in the uh, is in the passenger vehicle vertical for metal yes, cash that's right for metal cash flow yes for the us market uh, okay. light trucks ev light, light trucks. trucks yes okay ev light trucks okay okay yeah that's right understood okay all right sir thank you so much and all the very best thank you the next question is in the line of harini from sundar alternates please go ahead um Good afternoon, sir. Uh, so just one clarification. So uh, always our uh, goal was to uh, grow in, uh, I mean, uh, as for the market grows, we at least tend to or have a target of growing more than 5-6% uh, higher than the uh, industry growth line for the markets where we cater either in India or in Europe. Uh, at least from the past two quarters, we've been uh, uh, seeing a bit of uh, slowdown on that front. So how do you see it coming forward uh, in the next one, two years? Uh, do you see that... Uh, uh, expectations uh, to be coming back in place 
Yes, uh, no, that is what we have said. You know, some of our uh, ramp up has been delayed. But yes, yes, you are right. You know, our aim in India is to grow five percent and plus higher than the weighted average market. You know, we have different segments in in which we operate. You have to take a weighted average. Yes, in the medium term, if you are asking a question over two to three years, yes, that is our uh, that, that is our intent. <coughs> that is also our intent. Uh, in Europe, as Andrew just mentioned, that Europe the market is flattening, but even there we want to grow higher than the market through all these new orders that that we are looking at. So in over a two-year period, what you know, whatever we have said in the past holds. This quarter, as I said, you know, it's a specific case of ramp up not having happened. So it was, you know, uh, let let me put it. Simply, this quarter is not representative of what we are planning to do when it comes to growth numbers in India. Understood, sir. Understood, sir. Uh, and other portion, uh, if you could just uh, give out. Uh, so generally, we have uh, the new customer orders uh, contributing to around 25 uh, percent of the growth. So, do we are we in the same uh, uh, track going forward? How is uh, uh, the thing on the new customer additions? Are we somewhere on track in that? No, uh, is the question, ma'am, is that are we making new customer additions? Is that the question? Yes, sir. So just to put things in perspective, I think in India we have almost 50 customers with more than sales of 10 million per annum. Okay. So out of this, almost half would have been added in the last two to three years. So customer addition is an important part of our strategy. So it includes, you know, increasing our uh, buying from, uh, our selling to our existing customers, trying to grow our middle customers, and adding new customers. All three aspects, you know, all three aspects we are looking at, uh, and we will continue to look at. And, and that is what I'm saying. You know, we now have 50 customers in India with more than 10 million sales per annum. Okay. Understood. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind participants that you may press star 1 to ask a question. And the next question is from the line of Prati Kothari from Uni PMS. You may please go ahead. Hi. Good afternoon and thank you. Uh, uh, because again on India growth, uh, uh, sorry, multiple questions have been asked, but again, uh, if in the first nine months we have grown at the six percent, industry volumes have grown at six percent, but uh, on a sales basis, industry has grown at fifteen twenty percent. I mean, uh, uh, be it Mahindra, uh, Bajaj, Ashok Leyland, Tata are major customers, the major OEMs which have reported numbers and what is expected. Uh, so I understand that new platforms are taking time to ramp up and sir, this is incremental growth which needs to come in but uh, for existing models and for existing products and existing industry which itself is growing at 15% in this 9 months or maybe uh, Maruti has grown at 25% in the first 9 months or is expected to grow at 25% in the first 9 months. Uh, there are growth is only say 6% on a sales basis. Uh, uh, how do we reconcile this number? I don't think, you know, like if you look at the production numbers, those are not, you know, the weighted average production growth for YTD nine months is about 4%. Uh, if you look at it, so that's, uh, and we had a very good Q1. If you remember Q2 and Q3, we have been, you know, like uh, Q2 was around 5% for us uh, when the weighted average market growth was 1%. So, uh, you know, there are different numbers that are reported, but if you look at the production numbers, of various OEMs, uh, then you can clearly see the weighted average growth for YTD nine months is roughly around four percent. So right, that, but then we are comparing industry's volume growth to our sales number, then which is at, at least and, time and you have to also take into account the steel impact, which is not there. You know, we did mention steel impact in this quarter was about three percent. So if you if you take that steel impact six plus three roughly is 9% versus a weighted average market growth of 4%. So, but, but you know, like uh, steel, is, you have to keep it aside because at the end of the day, growth is what it is. And to your specific question on different OEMs, uh, 
different OEMs have done differently. Mahindra Auto continues to do exceedingly well. There is no doubt about that. Mahindra tractors on a YTT basis may not, you know, may be a little lower than on a YTT basis. Maruti and Bajaj, again, may be similar. Bajaj might be a little lower. If you look at uh, the production numbers, you have to understand Bajaj is 50% exports. So that is the situation. So we do track the market, and, and, and this is uh, our reading. Uh, on a weighted average basis, about 4%. We have grown 6% without the steel impact. Steel impact has been substantial this year, but as, I, you know, as we have said in the past, that is something which is part and parcel of the business. And, and uh, so uh, this is the, when you talk about the YTD result, this is how uh, we look at our results. And going forward, things will be better. Correct <laughs> point taken, but my only limited point was steel also impacts the OEMs when they sell, right? So OEMs are growing at 15% on a sales basis, and our growth is 6. Uh, no, we we look at numbers, yeah, production numbers, not you know like their sales numbers. We don't track. We look at their production numbers, and what we are talking about when we compare the market, we compare the production numbers. For us, that is what uh, is important. Whether, you know, how they pass on the sales, etc., we have not looked into that. You know, we have not analyzed that on uh, for the OEMs. But whenever we talk about the market, we talk about production numbers, not even sales, domestic sales. You know, production numbers includes domestic sales and exports uh, and, you know, the effect of inventory, etc., that they have. So that is, uh, you know, that is how we look at the market. Fair enough, sure. And uh, second on margins, I mean, first of all, the commendable job. I mean, by, uh, we have come all the way to 17, our aspirations are even higher. So, uh, given we are a process engineering company, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's commendable what we have done over. Well, hearty congratulations on that. Uh, just a question on that. I mean, uh, given we are not a product company and a process engineering company, so, uh, I mean, how is it that our customers, the OEMs, they also would be looking at our numbers, the margins that we report? Uh, I mean, how do they allow us to make this uh, kind of margins? Uh, and, and, and given our attempt to keep margins at such a high level, and this might be one of the best in the industry, uh, in, in terms of competition, etc., does that not hamper us uh, given the margins that we are achieving? No. Our customers are our partners. So we are not in competition with our customers. So as long as we meet the requirements and based on our efficiency efficiency level, that is to us. So when Anders speaks about margins, he talks about efficiencies. But that does not mean we will not meet the requirements of the customers, whatever they are. So as long as we meet the requirements, it's okay. And if they ask us for price deductions, etc., that of course, you know, we'll have to work that out. You know, that's a constant dialogue. Our customers are our partners. They are not in competition with us. Uh, as, as I said earlier, they optimize their margins. We optimize our margins. Our focus when it comes to margin improvement in India remains efficiencies. In fact, you had asked the question in the last call when Ander had given, uh, you know, a long, long answer on what we are doing to improve margins. If you go back to that answer, it has nothing to do with pricing. It has nothing to do with customer requirements. They are all internal. If you recall, it was automation. It was, you know, uh, production per person, uh, input-output ratios, layouts. You know, these were the things that uh, we talked about last time. And that is the focus uh, for us. So therefore, you know, whenever we talk about efficiency improvement in India, there is a long way to go on the engineering aspects itself. After that, of course, whatever the customers are, ask us, we will try and meet the requirements as far as possible. They are our partners. They are not our competitors. Okay. Correct. So largely the efforts that we make internally for improvement efficiency, uh, largely is for us to keep and uh, not that we have to share it with the customer. No, there could be different arrangements there. You know, customers might require, they, they might have their own requirements. All that I'm saying is, our margin improvements in India, we do think that from an engineering aspect, we still have room to improve. 
how much we share with our customers, what we share with our customers is a different issue. All that we are seeing is we do see a lot of prospects for improvement on the engineering side in India. Still, that's 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 what where we are at this moment. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Prati. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Priya Ranjan from HDFC Asset Management Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so just one thing, I, 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 if I'm not wrong, I think because you have mentioned around 6% growth, have an impact of say 9% of uh, adverse impact of commodity. So for a by TD basis, is it uh, fair to assume that the volume growth was 15%? Is this what you wanted to say? No, no, no. The weighted average volume growth of the market was 4% on a YTD basis in India. Yeah, that I understood. But for you, because you had a 9% adverse impact of commodity or steel price, so your volume growth was 15%. Not 9%, 3%. 3%, 3%, of, decrease. 3 of decrease. So 3% for this Q3 for YTD? For YTD, we'll have to work it out. We'll have to work it out, but you take this as representative. That is what we were, we were talking about. Okay. So, so the volume growth probably will be 3 plus whatever YTD. Yeah, yeah. No, no. So uh, it's not that we don't have growth. Yes, when the, you know, the steel, normally when the market is growing very high, the steel impact does not matter as much. But right now, because of tractor growth and two-wheeler growth, which is a little, you know, like Bajaj, Mahindra tractors, even Maruti is, you know, on a YTD test, zero, zero. So when you see this, then the steel starts having an impact. But having said this, you know, that's part and parcel of our business. We cannot, you know, like, uh, you know, keep talking about it. So it is what it is. But yes, uh, when our, uh, you know, our ramp up happens uh, elsewhere, I think you will see better, uh, better growth numbers. Understood. Understood. And any thoughts on uh, the two technologies which we have been talking in the past, particularly on the aluminium uh, forging side as well as the uh, uh, plastic in India. I mean, any any thoughts on that? I mean, when can we start? Because aluminium, I think because of the uh, electrification in Europe, we might have to put some plant or some, I mean, <coughs> whatever changes it might have to do in the plant. So how soon or how fast we are in, in that process? Aluminium forging is in Europe. That's what we are doing. We have already started to do it in a small way. You know, there are chassis parts, big parts that we have in, in, in Europe and there we have said same machines being used but the process is slightly different. You have, a, you know, you need to do heat treatment. Aluminium is a soft metal so, you know, some process parameters would be different. So in Europe we have already started doing, uh, doing it. In India right now the need for aluminium forging is limited. Whenever it happens we can do it. As I said, we are doing it at Galford so we can bring the know-how to India on the side, not a problem at all. As far as plastic is concerned, I think we have always said that we'll go the uh, MNA route for plastics. We already have composites, which is doing very well, by the way. You know, composites, uh, you know, when we talk about EVs in India, we normally don't talk about three-wheeler EVs, but three-wheeler EVs in India is a success story. It's a very big success story, especially Mahindra three-wheeler three -wheeler EVs. It's, you know, that division of Mahindra is doing very well and we are big suppliers to them and our composites division is doing well. So that will uh, hopefully continue to do well. On the uh, the plastic side, otherwise we, we will do through an m and what we have always said, the inorganic route. Now, and that depends on opportunities. Right now we have nothing in the pipeline, but yes, we keep looking for it. Understood. Yeah. And lastly, on this, uh, the uh, the uh, strike in Europe, I mean the U.S. Uh, so, any impact, uh, potential impact in the fourth Q numbers? I mean, uh, because of the strikes at various uh, OEMs in Europe, uh, U.S. Yes. So, till now, the impact of the, the American workers' strike in in Ford, in Stellantis, and in General Motors is very limited, okay? <laughs> in fact, in, I'm talking about uh, first CIE, impact for CIE was very limited in September, and 
probably we can have in, in those customers an impact of 10% till now in, in October. Okay, so it's not not relevant. And coming back to to CIE India, we have only certain impact on our uh, forging activity in Mexico, where we supply to to GM through uh, Tier One, and we are seeing certain uh, minor impact there. So till now, uh, the the impact of this strike is not is not relevant. Uh, okay, we will see what's going on in the next weeks, uh, but but till now the the situation is completely under control. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jigar Shah from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, 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 thank you, team, for taking my question. I am Vishal Shavastavia from Swan Investments. Uh, I have few questions. Most of my questions I got answered. I have few questions regarding European operations. Uh, just wanted to know, is there any trigger left in the margin improvement in the European operations uh, from here on in CY24 and 25? And if yes, where this improvement will come from? Will it come from the mix of new orders which you 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 have already bagged? Uh, the kind of pro, uh, you know product mix improvement or uh, value addition improvement through that? Uh, can you throw some light on that, please? Yes. Okay. The the margins in in our European operations were negatively affected last year during 2021 and 2022. We were negatively affected because of the energy price increase and the steel price increase. And also, we have a third reason, that is the, the big inflation that we have been suffering. And during 2023, we have been able to first uh, the reduction of the energy prices. I mean, the energy, uh, electricity, prices has gone down to a, a stable level at around 100 euros per megawatt. That's where we are now. So this reduction in cost has, uh, has allowed us to, to recuperate certain margins. Also, the, we have negotiated with the customers all the steel and energy update systems. I mean, so we most of the, our customers have accepted that these, these uh, cost drivers need to be uh, indexed. So that has been done. So we have recuperated the, the margins that we lost. And finally, we have the inflation where uh, we are uh, negotiating with the customers. And OK, that is a much more difficult issue to, to discuss. But overall, what we have done is we have been able to to recuperate the, the margins that we had before the, the crisis. Then, for the future, we, we expect to, to keep our margins, to keep our business profitable, and uh, it will be very complex in this uh, flat scenario to, to improve, to continue improving. Okay, so the businesses are really stretched and optimized and the further improvements are, are not not uh, easy to get. But overall, I would say that our aim is to maintain our margins in the in the current situation once we have recuperated them from the last year drop. Fair, sir. Fair. Thank you. Sir, Thank you. one more question regarding uh, the new orders which we have got in Europe. sir. Are these orders are through replacement of the existing programs, or these orders are uh, new programs which will lead to our market share gain? Okay, uh, you know that most of the uh, products that we are getting in in Europe are for electric vehicles that will replace the current internal combustion engines. Okay, so we can expect that the electric vehicles will replace. The, the internal combustion, the current programs, so uh, this is a clear substitution, okay? 
the good point or the good news for us in regarding these new programs that we are allocated now is that approximately 75, I mean exactly 74 percent of the total new orders are for electric vehicles. Okay, so that means that in the future we will see more and more electric vehicles in Europe, and we will have a, a growth, important growth in that segment. So that's the the message. But coming to your question, yes, I think that the, there will be a substitution from the electric vehicle substitute in the internal combustion engines. Okay, okay. Sir, uh, just last question, if I can squeeze it. Uh, sir, as our uh, mix towards these uh, execution of these electric vehicle programs improves, uh, I think, uh, is this understanding right that in that case, <coughs> our probability of margin improvement will be more as our value addition becomes higher uh, in those kind of platforms? Okay, uh, it, it depends on the product, but if the the, added, the value added that we are getting is is improving, of course we will have the opportunity to to improve our our margins. In the in the case of Metal Castello, for example, when we are talking about these electric vehicle components that are much more complex components, yes, we we expect to to improve our margins as the added value and the, the complexity of the product is, is growing. Also, this, there is all, I, I can tell you that the, in, in India we are doing also the same process. We are increasing the added value of our components, growing in the complexity. That means that we will be able to continue growing. I, perhaps I, I, I missed this point in, the, in my previous answer when we were talking about the, the improvement on, on internal efficiencies, but also the, the change on the portfolio and the increase of the complexity of the products will give us room for, for this margin improvement. Of course, it takes, we need to take the risk of making more complex products, and that is also additional effort from our engineers and from our production people. But uh, that's the trend, and that's exactly what we are doing in Europe and also in India. But in both regions, we are in the same, with the same path. Fantastic, sir. Uh, sir, thank you for taking my question, sir. Uh, thanks and all the best, team. Yeah, thanks, Vishal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vishal. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Varad Fate from Quest Investment Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. Question is for uh, Ender. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, Bharat. Yes, Bharat. Yes, yes. Go on. So, Ender, I mean, uh, Vikas has given, I mean, some color on these uh, aluminum forging. So, whereas we have aluminum forging in Europe and aluminum casting in the India side. So, how are we seeing and when do we expect that really aluminum forging can really uh, emerge for a big business like aluminum casting in India. And what are the, I mean, the challenges, the difference between these two process and if you can give a little more color as well as the end user. When did aluminum forging come up in India? Uh, and uh, what is the challenge in making aluminum forging? Okay, uh, we will see the the aluminum forging coming to India uh, soon for let's say uh, a small uh, product and small applications in probably in, in the two wheeler sector we already have certain aluminum forging components and for the four wheeler <coughs> forged aluminum is uh, uh, let's say uh, premium premium car component okay that's okay. why the volumes that we can expect in India for aluminum 14 are lower than than uh, other technologies mainly because of these uh, premium cars that should uh, uh, that they uh, use this this kind of aluminum 14 in Europe we are getting this new programs, this aluminum chassis component for premium cars. We are talking about premium cars like Jawa Land Rover or, or Mercedes or BMW. Those 
are the companies that they uh, use this chassis component in, made in aluminum, uh, very expensive components, and that's our our bet for our European business. And if this trend is coming to India and, and, and uh, there is this uh, premium cars being produced in India in the future, we will be ready to do that, okay? So my, my view in this moment is that the, this aluminum chassis component will be produced in Europe at the first stage, and for the two-wheeler in a certain small components will be also produced in India, okay? That's, that's the, the, the answer to your question. Okay, fair. And second uh, question, because when we are saying this two-wheeler uh, is down, we understand it's largely export, whereas in domestic, how are we seeing? Because in our uh, presentation, we have said that Chrisil is anticipating 7% of uh, growth in two-wheeler port, FY24, and then going. So how do we really read this? Uh, and what is the uh, on-ground uh, things are happening? No, no. Uh, uh, you know who is saying seven percent growth in two-wheeler market in 24? I mean, crystal statement, which we have published in uh, crystal research. Crystal research. Okay. Now, yeah. uh, Nine to ten to eleven percent in fiscal 24. No, see, crystal publisher sales data. We are talking about uh, production data. So when you are looking at those sales numbers, they are domestic sales. So domestic sales is recovering in India as we talked about. Export sales has yet not recovered. I think the latest data suggests that exports in India on a YTD basis, I have said this earlier in this call itself, was 20% down. So you have to look at uh, you have to look at both. But yes, the good news is the domestic market for two wheelers in India seems to be recovering, but it is recovering slowly. It's not as if, you know, there's a huge recovery. So I think that trend will continue. Okay. And second on the tractor, how do we see really see on the ground with there was a concern on the monsoon and September was a good rain. So how are we seeing? So on tractors? Yeah. Now, tractors, I don't think, at least uh, for the next few quarters, we think it will be stable on a sequential basis. That is our expectation of the tractor market. So you are right. So the monsoons, unfortunately, in India was like a, a sinusoidal curve. So June was very bad. July was extremely good. August was extremely bad. If you remember the driest August in Correct. 25 years, and September was decent. So now that has its own impact, you know, you know, an agricultural expert will tell us that that has its own impact, you know, the water bodies, etc. and all that. So we don't expect tractors to grow too much in the coming, uh, coming months. Uh, of course, there is a festive season that will have some impact, but tractors expected to remain stable. You know, if you look at the tractor numbers, I think Q3 numbers were negative. Uh, uh, year on year, but we do think it will remain stable at the sequential level. That's that's our reading. If we are proven wrong, we'll be happy about that. Okay. And last question to end up. See, in Europe also we have seen some decline in uh, and uh, Q3 and Q4 also will remain softer. Whereas in India also we our uh, volume uh, ramp up has not be in line with our expectations. So how much uh, operating leverage do we have to again, apart from our internal efficiency to improve the EBITDA margin? Okay, as, as I mentioned before, the, we are continuously working on, on the internal efficiency improvement, okay? The, the, we are following our internal metrics on on productivity, on let's say uh, cycle time reduction, cost reduction on on the uh, maintenance cost reduction, all all these kind of things we are doing in order to to improve our margins. I can tell you that most of our uh, verticals are uh, well prepared to to continue improving. So we all have a certain uh, room for improvement all verticals and, and let's say that we have a strong action plan in each one in order to continue improving. 
that means that if we improve, we, uh, we can be also more competitive in, in certain components and gain more market. So uh, overall, our approach is to, to be really efficient in order to, to be in the market with the, with the proper margins. Also, and uh, I mentioned before that the new products that we are launching are much more complex products than the products that we were producing before. So with this new product, we have a higher investment and of course higher added value and this requires higher margins in order to get the return on investment. Okay, so everything is linked and but the the company's evolution in the last years is has been really good. You you can see that our EBITDA margins uh, grew from some 2016, we were at 10%, and now we are hitting this 17% with the uh, important growth. And we expect to continue growing and matching uh, CIE margins, I mean, our parent group margins, that, that was the, the ultimate target that we have. Okay, so overall, the, the room for improvement is still there. It's true that if the market helps us and uh, there is a... Uh, an additional jump in the market, we will have easier job to, to improve the margins. If the market continues, let's say, uh, as a little bit uh, decelerated as, as it is now, we will be struggling, but we, we, will, we will be working in order to, to get this half a point more or 1% more to our PNL. So the the room and the actions are clear, the, everything is identified, all the verticals have uh, the opportunity to, to improve. So uh, in that sense, I am optimistic and that's my main job in this moment because the, 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 the new orders are also uh, being acquired at a very good pace. So we need to launch and to wait that our customers succeed with the launch of these products. Fair and thank you and all the best. Team. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. We will take that as our last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Okay, so as always, I would like to thank you all the participants for their well-directed and, and clever questions they made. Thank you for supporting and trusting our company. And also, I would like to say thank you to all the CIE India team for their hard job and the good results they are getting thanks to this uh, effort and in these difficult times. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.